The conversation around equality and tearing down racism continues in our series, We Stand Together. For some, ethnicity isn't the only battle they are facing, but in some cases, religion. Yeah, uh, tonight, News 8's multicultural reporter Katira Winfrey has more with the Muslim Alliance of Indiana. Injustice is what thousands are protesting and marching to end, but outside of that, some are using education to break down barriers. Ibrahim Algani with the Muslim Alliance of Indiana says the organization is doing that, but they're also pushing for justice because it's what God requires. There's quite a bit of things that have taken place in the last several months in America. But what I think is that they're all tied together. For example, as a black American, I've known and I've grown up in a society that uh, there's been constant and pervasive inequality and discrimination in jobs, um, education, housing, criminal justice, and health. Um, a lot of my uh, non-black colleagues weren't aware of that, or they claim to not have been aware of it. But now, with the pandemic, examples of police brutality uh, with the the uh, value, low value placed on black lives, uh, it's harder for people to feign ignorance. It's harder for people to act like they don't know. So we have this pandemic, and then you have black Americans dying doing routine things. You have Breonna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky. He was killed while sleeping. Routine thing. You have Ahmed Arbery being killed while jogging. And you have also the weaponization of race. You have Amy Cooper and Christian Cooper in the New York City Park. On the same day, and the tipping point is you have the George Floyd situation where an individual, a, a, a creation of God, a human being, life was taken away from him in such a ruthless fashion where someone stood on his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. And so now, People have been galvanized. And it's not just black Americans, it's people from all different backgrounds. And they want to address racial inequality. And the Muslim community and MAI is no different. What's the challenge for you being a, because as a black person, you have a list of things that you're facing. But also as a Muslim, there's a whole <laughs> other set. How does that, wow. what's your life like when you combine both of those two parts of yourself? characteristics being a Muslim and being an African-American have made my life more difficult here in America. And they both have given me unique perspectives. In fact, um, many of my non-black um, Muslims really had no idea what black folks went through until 9-11 happened. And they saw that just having a name like Muhammad or Ahmed or Khadija or Ibrahim made you much less likely to get an interview for a job, to get a call back, uh, to, to get opportunities that other people uh, with more common names in America did, I mean, would receive. So being a black Muslim, being a black American, I know that things will not be easy for me, but I count both as blessings. For you all, I've seen a lot of agencies kind of show their support and back these movements. Are there any specific things the um, Muslim Alliance of Indiana is doing to continue that push for justice? Like I indicated earlier, um, racial equality, racial justice, this is aligned with our mission. So what we have done is, first of all, we put out a statement along with other Muslim organizations and um, community leaders saying that we're unequivocally, unabashedly in support of racial justice and racial equality. Secondly, we have begun hosting webinars, and we continue to host webinars in which we educate uh, the Muslim community about the African-American narrative, the African-American experience, uh, African-American Muslim experience. We have racism in our community. So these webinars really have three purposes, to, to, to share the experience, the narratives of African-American Muslims, to educate our community about racism, and to galvanize and try to uh, organize uh, Muslims to take action uh, to address racial inequality and racial, uh, racial injustice in America. In fact, it is part of our faith. We cannot be spectators as Muslims on this particular topic. Um, 
in, in the Quran in chapter four, um, it says, Oh, you who believe, um, stand out firmly for justice, be custodians of justice. We have teachings which says it is forbidden to be uh, an oppressor and we should side with the oppressed. And finally, do you suggest everyone else take action, even if they're not a part of a specific organization, to kind of just do it on their own? The benefits of taking action at this time is if you want to see a better America, if you want to see a more just America, this is an opportunity to contribute to that. And I think that um, here, our purpose here on Life as Muslims, we believe our purpose here is to worship God and to to praise God and to and to do actions that are pleasing to God. And I can't think of a better way to worship God and to do things that are pleasing to God and to praise God by standing up for justice and fighting against oppression. That was well said. Our uh, We Stand Together series will continue to air this week on News 8 at 10 o'clock.